In this video, we're going to do one extra um, example of curve sketching. Okay, so our function that we're going to sketch is g of x here, which is 2x squared minus 18 on the top, divided by x squared minus 4. So, um, I'm just going to rewrite this so I can factor out the 2, which is going to be x squared minus 9 left over on the top. Okay, and then I can factor each of these because they're difference of squares. So I'm going to have 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 3 on the top, and x plus 2 times x minus 2 on the bottom. Now, you can always simplify your function, but you want to be careful not to cancel anything until you have computed the domain. Okay, so that's the first thing that I want to do when I'm thinking about sketching something. I want to know what is the domain of this function. Well, I obviously can't have the denominator being 0, so I can't have x squared minus 4 equaling 0. So that means that I can't be plus or minus 2. Okay, so x cannot be plus or minus 2, but everything else, every other x is good. Um, now I want to find the intercepts. Okay, so the y-intercept is when x is 0. Okay, so we find our y value to be g of 0. I'm going to use the original function. So this is 2 times 0 squared minus 18 over 0 squared minus 4. So I get minus 18 over minus 4, which is actually 9 over 2. So I get a point at 0 and 9 over 2, or 4.5. Okay, so let's just a box around that so we can find it later. Um, for the x-intercepts, okay, that's when the function is 0. Okay, so that means I'm going to have 0 equals 2x plus 3 times x minus 3 over x plus 2, x minus 2. So a fraction is 0 when the top is 0. So I want to know when 2 times x plus 3, x minus 3 is equal to 0. So I'm going to get that's when x is plus or minus 3. So we get points um, negative 3, 0 and 3, 0. Okay, so those are our x-intercepts. Okay, now I want to think about asymptotes. So I'm going to start with vertical asymptotes. Okay, so here we're going to have asymptotes when the denominator is zero. Um, we get holes when the, the factor cancels out. So if we were able to cancel one of the factors away, then we would get just a hole. Okay, but here we have uh, vertical asymptotes. So we're going to have vertical asymptotes when x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. Now, uh, if you were to take the limit as x goes to 2 um, from the left and right of our function, okay, this limit's not going to exist. Okay, and each one is going to go to plus or minus infinity. Okay, and the same with the limit as we go to negative 2. Okay, so you're going to get some type of infinity there. We could actually compute these um, so that we know, um, but it might not be necessary. Um, so maybe I'll just leave that for now, but let's put these in a red box. So these are asymptotes, vertical asymptotes. Um, horizontal asymptotes, so to find that, okay, so I actually know there's going to be 1 at y equals 2, okay, how do I know that? Well, if you think about the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity in this case of g of x, this is the limit as you go to plus or minus infinity of 2x squared minus 18 over x squared minus 4. And what I'm going to do 
is multiply by 1 over x squared on the top and the bottom. So that's like multiplying by 1. So I haven't changed the limit yet, or at all. Um, then it's going to be 2 minus 18 over x squared over 1 minus 4 over x squared. Now as x gets really large, either positive or negative, doesn't matter, 18 over x squared is going to go to 0, as is 4 over x squared. So what we're going to get this limit is equal to 2 over 1, or 2, which is why we get the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Um, we also have some symmetry here. So symmetry is something we don't always check. Okay, but I will check in this one. So if I think of g of minus x, that's going to be 2 times minus x squared minus 18 over minus x squared minus 9. So that's going to be 2x squared minus 18 because the negative, when I square a negative, it, it goes away over x squared, oops, not 9, sorry, on the bottom is 4. Minus 4. Um, so notice that this is equal to g of x. Okay, so that means that g of x is even, so it's an even function, which means it's symmetric about the y-axis. So maybe I'll put that in a blue box. So we know it's symmetric about the y-axis. Uh, okay, so that's all the pre-calculus things that we can find. Um, now we want to think about the calculus. So I'm going to take, so I want to know increasing, decreasing, and critical numbers. So this, these things are all related to the first derivative. So I need to compute g prime of x. So I'm going to use um, this form here, because it's actually the best one, um, to compute that. So I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is going to be 4x, so it's 2 times 2x, times the bottom, x squared minus 4, minus the derivative of the bottom is 2x, times the top all over the bottom squared. Okay, now if I expand all of this, I'm going to have 4x cubed minus 16x minus 4x cubed plus 36x over x squared minus 4 all squared. And I see that these cubes cancel out. And the other things are like terms, so I actually get 20x over x squared minus 4 all squared. Okay, so that's my derivative. So where is the derivative equal to 0? Okay, that's when the top is 0 which is going to be when x is 0. Okay, so that's a critical number because it's in the domain. And now I want to think, okay, where is the derivative, where does the derivative not exist? So that's going to be when the bottom is 0, which we know is when x is plus or minus 2. Okay, but those are not in the domain. Okay, so these are not critical numbers. Okay, since they're not in the domain. Okay, but the increasing, decreasing can still change at those points, so we are going to put them on our number line. Okay, so we'll do our number line here. So I'm going to have negative 2 is the first place it can change, and then 0, and then 2, and I have to check a point in each interval. So let's say I check negative 3. So the derivative is going to be 20 times negative 3. And in fact, the bottom is always uh, positive because it's something squared. So I'm actually just going to write it as positive to save a bit of time. So this is going to be a negative over a positive. So I'm going to get a negative. So I'm going to be decreasing on this interval. Okay, let's just write 
this doesn't exist and this doesn't exist. So we don't forget that those are not in the domain. Okay, then what if I do negative 1? I'm going to have 20 times negative 1 over something that's positive. So again, I get a negative. So I'm still decreasing there. Now if I do 1, I'm going to have 20 times 1 over a positive. So that's a positive over a positive. So in this interval, I'm going to be increasing. And if I pick, say, 3, I have 20 times 3 over a positive. Again, it's a positive, so I'm still increasing. So we see the only place where we have a critical number okay, is at 0, and it looks like it's going to be a relative minimum. Okay, so we have a relative min, and because we it's at 0, um, the x value, we already know the point is 0, 9 over 2. Right, because remember that was the um, y-intercept. Okay, so we have that relative min value. Um, so, okay, so we're done all of the first derivative stuff. Um, we know that it's going to be decreasing until zero and then increasing after zero. So now we want to think of the concavity. concavity and the points of inflection. So these are all to do with the second derivative. So that means we need to compute the second derivative. So I want to, where's my first derivative here? Okay, so I'm going to do second derivative. So I'm using this uh, most simplified version of our derivative. Again, I need to use the quotient rule. Okay, so the derivative of the top is 20 times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom, where I need to use the chain rule here, so it's 2x squared minus 4 squared, or not squared, sorry, to the power 1, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x, and then times the top, which is 20x, and then it's all over the bottom, which used to be x squared minus 4 all squared, and then I need to square that again. Okay, so again, I... So now I see oops, um, some like terms, so I can pull out. So x, minus, x squared minus 4 appears in both terms, as does the 20. Okay, so I can take out both of those. So I'm going to have 20 x squared minus 4 to the power 1. And in the first term, I'm going to have one more x squared minus 4. And in the second term, I'm going to have um, 4x squared, it looks like, because I have a 2, and then 2x, and then another x. Uh, okay, and this is all over x squared minus 4 to the power 4. So now I can cancel out one of those, so I have 3 left on the bottom, and simplify inside these brackets, so I'm going to have 20 times... Um, negative 4 minus 3x squared all over x squared minus 4 cubed. Is that right? So I have x squared yeah that looks right. Um, I can actually pull out the negative if I want so I have negative 20 x squared sorry 3x squared um, plus 4 over x squared minus 4 all cubed. So I want to do the same thing as we did before, okay, so where does the second derivative equal to 0? So that's when the top is 0, okay, 
Okay, now negative 20 is never zero, so that means that 3x squared, oh, this is a plus, sorry, plus 4 should be zero. So if I solve for x squared, it means that x squared equals negative 4 thirds. Now I can't square root both sides because one side is a negative, so this never, this is never true. So there's no values. No x values make the second derivative equal to zero. Okay, what about where does the second derivative not exist? So that's when the bottom is zero. Oops x squared minus 4 cubed equals 0. So this is again where x is plus or minus 2. Again, these are not um, possible inflection numbers, okay, since they're not in the domain. Okay, but the, the concavity could still change there. So we do want to include them on our number line. Okay, but those are, so we're not going to have any points of inflection. We know that. Um, so I put negative 2 and positive 2. Okay, again, I'm just going to remind myself that these do not exist. So they're not points of inflection. And now I could check negative 3. I plug that into the second derivative, I have negative 20 times, um, so it's going to be 27 plus 4 over um, 9 minus 4 cubed. Okay, so that's a negative times a positive over a positive. So this is going to be a negative, which means it's going to be concave down in that interval. Okay, if I plug in 0, I have negative 20 times 0 plus 4 over 0 minus 4 cubed. So here I have a negative over a negative. So that's going to give me a positive. So I'm going to be concave up in that interval. And then if I do something bigger than 3, or bigger than 2, sorry, 3, I have negative 20 times 27 plus 4 over again 9 minus 4 cubed. Um, so again this is going to be negative and concave down. And if we think about it, uh, so it does change concavity, sorry, at negative 2 and 2, but they're not points of inflection. Okay, since they're not in the domain. Um, okay, so now I want to graph um, so I'm going to put in my asymptotes. So I know I have asymptote, vertical asymptotes at plus and minus 2. Okay, and I have a horizontal asymptote at positive 2. So this is y equals 2. This is x equals 2, x equals negative 2. Okay, so those are my asymptotes. Now I want to think about the, um, the intervals. Um, so the first ones, it only changes at negative 2 and at 0. Okay, so when I am less than negative 2, we were um, decreasing, okay, and we were concave down. So the shape that we have looks something like that. Okay, now between negative 2 and 0, we're still decreasing, but now we're concave up. So we have a shape like that. Between 0 and 2, we're now increasing, but still concave up, so our shape looks like that. And when we're bigger than negative, or bigger than 2, we're still increasing, but now we're concave down. Our shape's going to look like this. And in fact, the only point, oh no, we have two points that we can, three points we can plot. So we know at 0, we're at 4.5 or 9.5. 9 over 2. And at 
negative 3, 0, and positive 3. Oops, that's not the right spot. Sorry. Um, positive 3, 0. So um, because these are vertical asymptotes, we know that we have to approach plus or minus infinity. Um, and the shape sort of tells us that this one has to, because it's decreasing, it's going to have to go to negative infinity. And then over here, it definitely approaches this asymptote. So it's going to look like that and see that it's, con it's decreasing and also concave down the whole time. Okay, now here, because we're, as we approach zero, x equals zero, we're going to be decreasing towards it. It means that we have to be going to positive infinity as we approach this asymptote from the right down to this point, which is has a slope of zero. And then it's a relative minimum, so we go back up. Okay, um, and then over past x equals 2, we're increasing. So that means that we had to be coming up from negative infinity, approaching this point, um, kind of concave down way, and then we're going to approach this asymptote as x gets large. So that's what our graph is going to look like. Um, so we have a, um, switch colors here. So this point here is our only extreme of value. And remember, it was a relative uh, minimum. Minimum. Okay, and it has derivative zero, so it's not a sharp turn. It's a nice, smooth, rounded, rounded edge. So that's what the graph of g of x looks like here.